Sometimes it's easy to forget that some places exist that you would think were ripped right out of a nightmare. Beneath the streets of Paris, France exist massive, complex tunnels of human remains. Known as the Catacombs of Paris, these underground ossuaries are the resting place for an estimated 6 million people. Between the late 18th and mid 19th centuries, remains were gradually transported into these catacombs after a number of above ground cemeteries were shut down as they were deemed to be a risk to public health from cave ins. Aside from that, graveyards were overflowing with burials. The catacombs of Paris are actually a small part of a much larger network of abandoned mines below the city streets. For many years, these catacombs have been open to the public for guided tours, but not all areas of the catacombs can be explored. In fact, the official tours only offer exploration for a tiny portion of what the catacombs have to offer. Some portions of the catacombs are artistically structured with bones and skulls neatly placed and organized. Other areas, it appears as if bodies were hastily tossed into open areas to speed things along. Luckily for cataphiles, people who have a passion for exploring these more restricted areas of the catacombs, there isn't simply one entrance to the crypts below. Paris is littered with hidden, secret entrances to access the tunnels without proper supervision so the explorer can wander about freely. This is a rather frequent occurrence, and while it's not legal, the punishment is only a small fine, so many take the risk. However, these areas are illegal to explore for good reason. They're often composed of dangerously tight and at times unstable areas due to the sheer age of the structure. It's simple to become hopelessly stuck and crying for help will likely do nothing if help isn't already there with you. The possibility of adding to the remains of the catacombs yourself is an uncomfortably good one. In what was believed to have been the early 1990s, one man decided to infiltrate the pitch black, nearly soundless catacombs with a camcorder to explore. The camcorder was said to have been discovered some years after the man had entered the catacombs. The tape featured what is quite possibly the last record anyone has of the man's life. What comes next may disturb you. Venturing alone into the eerie labyrinth of millions of human remains, a labyrinth that is vast, confusing, easy to become lost inside, could either be considered brave or very foolish. The tape inside the camcorder was reviewed by a filmmaker named Francis Freeland, who claimed that the tape was given to him by the explorer who discovered it. The footage was featured on a television program called Scariest Places on Earth, which aired on Fox Family and later ABC Family from 2000 to 2006. It is unknown as to how much editing the footage was subjected to for its television premiere, but portions of the original footage had been cut out, with the more intense parts being featured on the program. Freeland, however, claims on the episode that there were over 40 minutes of video total before things took a bizarre turn and came to an abrupt end. The tape shows a point of view shot of a single man traveling through the shadowy, sometimes baffling tunnels. There isn't much question as to whether or not the man was actually there. His exploration shows very clear, factual footage of what can be found in the catacombs. The man stops a number of times to investigate bones, chambers filled with remains, and even goes as far as to pick up the cap of a skull. The man continues on finding arrows guiding his way. Whether these specific arrows point to an exit or only deeper is unknown. But what we do know is that the exploration didn't remain as calm as it had been for a portion of the footage. Eventually, the man encounters a rather chilling painting on a wall, a white human figure with its limbs spread apart. Shortly after this point, the explorer becomes rather uneasy. This discomfort quickly turns into panic, and he takes off running down a long, narrow pathway. Anyone could tell you that running in a panic through a vast, dark system of tombs is an awfully bad idea. 
it's a very real and fatal possibility to become quite lost. One more famous case tells the story of a doorkeeper for a hospital during the French Revolution who accessed the catacombs from a staircase located in the hospital courtyard. It's believed he swiftly became lost and his body was found 11 years later. The keys to the hospital still attached to his remains. Despite technological advances, the catacombs are as dangerous as ever. As the footage continues on, the explorer seems more and more disturbed as he races down the confined corridors, occasionally stopping to perhaps determine which way he should take. His breathing becomes louder and louder as panic and exhaustion take hold of him. And suddenly, without warning, the camcorder hits the ground as the man's feet rush over the wet dirt, carrying him off into the darkness. This is allegedly where the footage ends. The man does not return to the camera. It's simply left there until the battery dies. There is nothing more offered beyond this. The abrupt conclusion would point to the fact that the man filled with fear abandoned one of his lifelines, the light on his camera. Finding a way out without it, unless he had a very good idea of where he was and where the closest exit was, is just about impossible. The episode of Scariest Places on Earth which featured this found footage aired in 2000. Since then, the mystery surrounding it has still gone unsolved. Those who have witnessed the footage, as you just have, still debate heavily over its authenticity. Though we can safely bet the location in the video is indeed the Paris Catacombs, and we know that becoming lost in the catacombs isn't difficult, we are left with many lingering questions. Is this found footage real, or is it a fake? Did the man die in those tunnels, or did he find a way out through the darkness? And most importantly, if the footage is real, what caused him to panic? Could it have been his imagination getting the best of him, or perhaps something more? No one has come forward with anything other than speculation, though it's quite possibly a hoax. Why has no one come forward, even someone its creator might have shared the story with? These are questions we may never have answers to, but I welcome you to discuss your viewpoint in the comments below. That's all for now, and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you'd like to learn more dark and disturbing things, please be sure to subscribe to my channel now, and I will see you next Wednesday.